Okay, we've been given a rectilinear motion question where it says at time t, the position of the body moving along the x-axis is x is equal to t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t meters. Now, we're asked then to find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero, find the body's speed each time the acceleration is zero, and find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals zero to t equals two. Okay, so first question, we've got A. We have to find, to start with, we have to figure out when the velocity of this particle is equal to zero. So hopefully you'll know from your studies that velocity in terms of time can be found by taking the derivative of a position equation. So we have, this is going to be like dx dt. So in our case, if we take the derivative of our position function, this is going to be equal to 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. So that's the equation that's going to tell us what the velocity is at any point t in this body's you know, motion. So we then have to figure out when the velocity is equal to zero. So we have to find the t that will make this equation equal to zero. Now this is a bit of pre-calculus sort of algebra work here. This is a quadratic equation. We have to make it equal zero. So we're going to have to do a bit of factorization. So to start with, what I'll do is I'm going to factor out three because I know that it can go into those three coefficients. So three outside of t squared minus 4t plus 3 is equal to 0. Now to factorise this trinomial we have inside, we need two numbers that multiply together to give positive 3 and add together to give negative 4. So that's going to give us negative 1 and negative 3. So we have t minus 1. So what we can say then is, now we have this fully factored quadratic, we can use the null factor law, so I'll actually write that. So by the null factor law, t will have to equal 1 or t will have to equal 3. Cool. So now that we have our t values where the velocity is going to be equal to zero, we have to sub them into a equation that's going to give us the body's acceleration, but we don't have that yet. So we have to find the formula that gives acceleration. So that's going to be equal to, we know that acceleration in terms of time can be found by differentiating a velocity equation. So if we differentiate our velocity equation, which is this one here, we're going to get 6t minus 12. And so to final finalize this question, we just have to write, figure out what v of 1 is or v when t equals 1, and that's going to be 6 times 1 minus 12. It's going to be negative 6, and that's going to be meters per second. We also have to find v of 3, which is equal to 6 times 3 is 18, minus 12 is 6. So there you have it, that's our solution to part A of this question. So let's get on to part B.
Okay. Part B, we're asked to find the body's speed each time the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay. Well, we just calculated that acceleration in terms of time is equal to 6t take 12. So this has we have to find out the time that will give acceleration equal to zero. And you can see we can take the 12 over divide by 6. We know that we can pretty simple to see that time will equal to 2. So we then have to find out the body's speed in us. Now, the difference between speed and velocity is that velocity is a vector quantity, which means the sign in front of the velocities matter. So negative 6 metres a second is different to 6 metres a second. But speed is a scalar quantity, so we're only interested in the magnitude, not the direction. So we can write this speed is equal to the magnitude or the absolute value of a velocity time function. So, so we have to substitute 2 into our velocity function, which we've got up here, which is this quadratic. So it's going to be the absolute value of 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 9. And that equals the absolute value of 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 24 is negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is obviously 3 meters a second to the negative 1. And so that's our solution to part B. The speed of this particle when the acceleration is 0 is equal to 3 meters a second. Okay. Now let's just separate these and work on part C. Now part C is probably the most complicated bit. I, for me anyway, it was the most complicated. So it says find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 2. Now what makes this one complicated is we have distance, not displacement. So like speed, distance is a scalar quantity. So we're going to have to integrate a velocity time function from the domain that we've been given here. So the distance the travel particle travels in a particular time is equal to the integral from what we're going to be doing is 0 to 2 of v of t dt. Now the problem with this is because of the scalar quality of distance rather than displacement that we've got here, this is displacement, not distance, it's important for us to have a look at what the graph looks like of the function that we'll be integrating and just get a rough idea so we can see if there's going to be any parts along this domain where the integral will in effect cancel each itself out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a very crude set of axes just here. So there's that x. And there's our y. Now we're going to be graphing v of t against time. Now, when t is equal to 0, we have a look at this. We've got v of t equal to 9.
and then what we're going to do is we're going to we know that velocity is equal to zero at t equals one. So let's just put that in. Comma zero and also at three comma zero. Okie dokie. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a line. Uh, our quadratic is going to come down here and turn around and go back out there. So we'll do a turning point. It was probably going to be around, well, is going to be at time equals 2. I did warn you that this was going to be crude. That's really crude, isn't it? Um, let's give that another shot. That'll do. Okay, now we have to integrate it from 0 to 2. Now, 2 is going to be around here somewhere. So that's t equals 2. So we have to work out what the area of this is going to be. Now, the problem is, if we integrate, just go straight, do the straight integral from 0 to 2, what will happen is this area above the curve will have the effect of cancelling out area below the curve. Or you can see the other way around, the area below the curve will have the effect of cancelling out the area above the curve. So what we're going to do, because distance is a scalar quantity, so scalar, we're going to have to work out what the integral of this part is. So we're going to have to integrate this and then we're going to have to integrate the bottom piece and get the absolute value of that and then add them together. So let me just write that down, what we're going to do, give us a game plan. So the total distance will equal, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of vt dt and we're going to add that to the absolute value of the integral of 1 to 2 vt dt and what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that these actually add together rather than cancel each other out so, what's good about these um, distance velocity acceleration relationships is we already have what the antiderivative of velocity is in the question. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to change color, make it easy to see. This is going to be equal to t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t evaluated between 0 and 1, added to the absolute value of t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t, evaluated between 1 and 2. All right, now let's do some math, um, some addition. If we put this in at 1, we have 1 minus 6 is going to be negative 5, plus 9 is 4. And then if we sub 0 in, we're just going to get nothing. So that's going to be 4. And we're going to add that to the absolute value of, if we put 2 in on this one, we've got 8 minus 24, which is negative 16, plus 18, which is going to be positive 2. And we have to minus what it is at x equals at t equals one, so that's going to be four. So you can see this number here would be negative and have the effect of cancelling out part of the four. So that's why we're taking this absolute value of it. So this is going to be equal to four plus the absolute value of negative two, which is equal to six meters. And that is the answer for the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 2.